Hey there guys, it's Chevy here. So, today we're going to be talking about something that's really important to me and it's really important that you guys know. So, let's get started, I guess. I know that on the outside I seem really happy and joyful and, you know, that must be the life of every party that I go to. Honestly, that's probably the complete opposite of what I really am like in real life. Not to say that I'm not happy and joyful at times, but I just am not that way all the time. I don't think anybody ever really is. A lot of times the words introverted, extroverted get thrown around, and I like to consider myself somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm kind of a weird hybrid. I do like to spend time with people in social settings and situations, but I really have to find something that I can like latch onto or grasp or quickly like start a conversation about whether it's like sports or maybe like, you know, someone's wearing a sweater that has like an anime that I've watched or maybe they're into like a TV show or anything like that. And I, and I immediately grasp onto it. Um, to kind of like make a conversation, make a connection. And if I can't find something right away, then I just completely shut down. I will stand in the corner of a room by myself with the only other person that I know and just wall myself off. So it happens a lot of times in different scenarios, whether I'm uncomfortable or I just don't know anyone. Um, it's just one of those things that it kind of, like it constantly happens um, and I've tried to be better about it and be a little more open and things like that but it you know I think it's just a personality trait so I want to tell anyone right now that's watching that this video is going to get a little real so there's going to be moments of sadness of tears and a bunch of different emotions. So if that's not something you want to like watch at the moment or anything like that, then, you know, feel free to look at one of my other videos or look at one of my Twitch streams or something, or, you know, just go to another channel altogether. Um, I just want it as a forewarning. So what the hell does all of that mean to you, right? So for many of you guys, you guys might know me from streaming, some of you guys might know me from YouTube. Some of you might know me in real life. Some of you just know me from either medium or a mix of the two or just maybe from someone that knows me or something. Regardless, some of you guys have known me for days, for weeks, for months, maybe even years. So right now, there's something that I'd really love to tell you all. And I think it's really important to tell you. And I think I finally found the courage to tell you. So when I was around 11 or 12, I don't remember, honestly. I was sexually abused by a family member. And I know it's awful. And I just... The person who did this, was someone I trusted, someone I spent time with, someone I grew up with, you know, someone that I obviously, in any other setting, would never have believed would do this to me. It's a jarring thing, and I'll give you guys a second to kind of, like, breathe, because I'm sure I need it too. It's a crazy thing to go through something like that. It's been almost 15 years. And even saying it now, as a grown woman, as you can see, it still brings me to tears. And it's very hard to even speak as to what it makes you feel. At the time, you know, I was 11 or 12, um... I was going through puberty, you know, my parents were getting a divorce, I was changing schools, and there was just so many things happening. 
And it's crazy to believe that it happened. And for the longest time, I always thought maybe I had just imagined it or I was blowing something out of proportion. And that clearly was not the case. But when something like that happens, it's very damaging to a person, no matter the age. But it's even not more damaging, but it can be even more devastating when it's happening during a crucial like learning and growing period in your life. You know, you're coming into your own, you're learning things about your body, you're learning about the world at large, you're figuring out where your place is. And then something like that happens and it kind of throws a wrench into everything that you've ever known and kind of opens your eyes to the world in the worst kind of way. So, as many of you might know, you know, through different media and different things like that, when something like that happens to a child, the effects can be absolutely devastating. And in my case, they were. I went on a downward spiral. I went ahead and I started to act out. I started to cut myself. I started to contemplate suicide. And it was a very trying time in my life, especially for a 12-year-old. You have no concept of feeling what life is. You have really just this amount of pain and confusion and just betrayal that you're not sure how to react. You're not sure how to actually take hold of it and either, you know, call for help or be productive or channel it into something. Sometimes it can be manifested in anger. It can be manifested in so many different ways. And when that happened, I went through all of those things. Now, some of you might be wondering, why now? After 15 years, shouldn't you have just left it in the past? Should it be just something that you've moved on from? I tell myself that every day, honestly. I tell myself that it's okay, that I'm alive, but that feeling never really goes away. And in my particular case, it's a case like many that I'm sure you've heard before, that you've heard in passing, that you've seen on the news. It just, justice didn't come for me. Now, personally for myself, because of my age, because of what happened, it was really difficult for me to even want to admit what was going on. It went for a certain amount of time, and it wasn't just one incident. But you have no idea how things are going to change, how people are going to react. And that was what kept me in this mind that if I said something, that I would be blamed that I would feel the shame, the shame that I already felt for allowing it to happen, which is a very, very common thing for victims. You feel as if it's your fault, as if you did something, which I'm here to tell you, if you feel that way, it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't. No matter what someone wants to tell you, you did nothing wrong. And it's something that I heard, but it's something I didn't believe. So fear kept me quiet. Eventually, I did speak out and I did say something. 
But by the time that rolled around, for me, it felt like the fight was already lost. And I was already so broken and damaged from what had transpired before that it almost didn't seem worth it. And that's one of the few things that I regret. But for a lot of times and for a lot of victims, you have to come to that realization yourself. You have to be the one that says, I'm taking back this power. For a lot of people, that day comes sooner rather than later. And for some people, it doesn't come at all. For the reason that I'm even mentioning this, I'm dredging it back up again, is my abuser passed away. And I was so unsure of how to feel. It's not someone I talk to. They're not someone I put myself around. So what do you do with that information? Do you cry? Do you feel happy? Do you feel relief? Do you feel freedom? Do you feel like you can breathe? Do you feel safety? What the fuck do you feel? I have no idea. I'm literally still dealing with it right now. I have no idea how I feel. I have an immense amount of just whirlwind of emotions. Obviously, I don't lament the loss of that particular person. But I do lament the loss of life. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel some sense of I can breathe. And it's a crazy thing because I never felt 100%, and I still don't feel 100%, but I never thought that this day would come. And just statistically speaking, it's very unlikely that that happens sometimes. And I just, I don't know. It's an odd thing. I don't want to make it seem as if I don't care. I mean, honestly, I don't. This is someone who not only took advantage of a child, but basically did everything in their power to break me before I was even really a person. But at the same time, you think about the ripple effect and think about the amount of damage that is done and the amount of pain that something like this puts into other people. Now, in my particular case, um, I am Hispanic, um, so my view is a little different than other people. Um, in my culture or just the way that it seems like we police ourselves, it's a very don't talk about your feelings kind of thing. You know, it's a very old mentality of thinking of very traditional you keep your feelings to yourself and you say nothing otherwise and when the initial event happened i always had that in the back of my mind and it's one of those things where i just i drank the kool-aid and i just continued to drink the kool-aid to i don't know Maintain my self-preservation, I guess, at that point. Like I said, it's... I don't want to give the impression that, like, my family wasn't supportive. Um, my family was. But uh, obviously, 
this is one of those things where there's so many ways it can play out. You know, you can have so many different things that could happen from just this one thing. You know, you hear about it all the time. Sometimes parents, you know, mothers, fathers, whatever, don't believe when their children tell them something like this. Maybe they're not in a good place mentally, financially, or otherwise, and it becomes very difficult to want to believe. And I know that in a perfect world, we like to pretend that everyone understands that this is wrong and it's something that should never happen, but it does happen. And unfortunately, the harsh reality is a lot of times even when you do say something, sometimes there's no one there to hear you. In my case, I ran away from the problem. I took off. I left. And I think it did me a lot of good. I was able to grow in an environment where I felt safe. Where I felt secure. And... It helped start the process of becoming me again, but I don't think I'm ever really done with that process. Now, what the hell does that have to do with me and you guys in general, right? I just wanted you guys to kind of know that. I can't believe it's taken me this long. And it's... A weird reason for not wanting to tell people. Obviously, I'm not saying I would share this with someone that I randomly meet on the street. But for people that are close to me and people that may consider them friends or even good friends don't know this about me. And I felt it was important to say it. To actually say it. Yes, I was molested. And use that, and use this time and this moment to bring some good out of it. It's taken me years to come to terms with it, to actually allow myself to seek help professionally, to actually stand up for myself and say, no, I will not let that define me. It is a part of who I am, but I will not let it be the only thing that I am. And that's why I think it's really important um, that I channel this energy that I have Granted, it's still very confusing and it's a very weird time for me. But I hope out of this terrible situation to actually bring some good. I was speaking before about how often this happens. And honestly, if you look at statistics, your stomach might just churn. How frequent this actually happens to men and women. Especially when you're under the age of 13. It's more than likely, it's usually a family member or a trusted friend. The odds of it being a complete stranger are always much, much less than someone who's there. These people, these disgusting piles of shit, are people that can be charming, that can be manipulative, and they can be anyone. They can be your dad, they can be that uncle, they could be your cousin, your brother, your stepdad, or your stepmom, or your aunt, or your grandma, or whoever. It doesn't matter who they are. It can be one of them. I'm not saying that to scare you, and I'm not saying it for you not to trust any other human being. What I tell you is maybe just be a little more vigilant. Maybe just understand 
and try to educate your kids as much as you can. My parents had that talk with me. They had the talk of, you need to tell us when someone touches you inappropriately. And I understood it. And I knew that it was wrong. And I knew it wasn't something that should be happening. But the fear, which I feel is a mix of a lot of things, of family, of media, of just general perception, is that immediately you'll be blamed. And it's, and it's a pretty standard fear for most people. A lot of times fear overrides the amount of pain that you're suffering and a lot of times people choose to suffer in silence and a lot of times when the suffering gets to be too much it's when we have loss of life and for better or for worse sometimes those things are preventable or at least could possibly be helped So what I'm getting at is I want to take this anger, this relief, this sadness, this weird whatever of emotions that I have right now. And I want to channel it into energy that's positive. For 14 years, I just closed myself off. I just wanted to pretend like it didn't happen. And if I pretended it didn't happen, then maybe I could move on. But unfortunately, like many people, the residual memories are still there. The trauma is still there. And if you let it fester, it can really, really change how your life goes, how you have an outlook on life. I'd like to say I don't still have nightmares. I do. It happens. I wake up feeling the touch. And it sucks. I think sometimes that's why I can't sleep very well. Because it was happening during that time. So for the most part, I've lost all sense of trust when it comes to sleep. Yes, it may be my husband sleeping in the bed next to me. But in that moment, in your mind, that's not what it feels like. So what I would like to do is focus all of this energy to an organization that does some really great work. Starting February 1st. I will have a week-long charity stream with all of the proceeds going straight to the RAIN organization. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, the RAIN organization is the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. They're an organization that manages the National Crisis Hotline, I believe. And they also go ahead and work with a lot of different organizations across the states that help victims, survivors, what you would like to call yourself, in cases of abuse. They work with education. They work with assisting when it comes to services, referrals, and things of that nature. Now, I know for a lot of people, it's something that, it's an uncomfortable thing to talk about. I understand. This is not something you bring up at a dinner table. It's not something you bring up as a discussion. But I honestly feel that this is just so important. For the last, you know, 26 years that I've been alive, I've always dreamed of attempting to make a difference in some way. And obviously, when something like that happens to you, it gets really hard to believe that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I know it was for me. There were times where I didn't think I'd make it towards the end of the tunnel, let alone even see the light. But 
this is a process and it's a process that I have no idea how long it'll take me to get through or if I'll ever really get through, to be honest. But I just want you guys to know and everyone else that I'm here. It is a battle. But it's just so important for organizations like RAIN to educate and to continue to help survivors move on with their lives. I will do my absolute best to answer any of your guys' questions if you guys have them. I know by opening this door, for some people it might seem odd to kind of put your business out there. But I think, honestly, I'm so fucking tired of being silent. It took me 15 years to finally find a voice. But you know what? I'm glad I have it. I will give you guys all the information that you guys want for the RAIN organization. And tomorrow night, we will be doing the stream. And I will have an AMA up. And we will hopefully open up a dialogue. Be able to answer questions about, you know, what happened. The ramifications of what it can be. And just... Hopefully be able to reach out to someone that maybe is going through something similar or has gone through something similar and can understand that you are not alone and you do not have to let it silence you. All right, guys. Love you guys.